Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Voice. Once again, to voice. I'm Nate Patterson, your host, and we have a hot topic once again uh, on tap for you today. Twelve years a slave. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> All right. So, the movie Twelve Years a Slave. Everybody knows how I feel about slave pictures. It's no mystery. But I want to talk about this because it's a hot topic. There are two different perspectives. Actually, there's three. Um, you know, you have two perspectives by Negroes, and then you have the European perspective. Um, I'm going to look at this from our perspective today, and I'm going to try to to get through to some people that we do not need another slave picture to identify with. I just checked on Google, and you know I usually say fuck the Google, right? But I had to know. I mean... I just Googled uh, a list of slave pictures. All right, there were many different categories. I could have I could have Googled uh, these slave pictures up. Um, I could have Googled for slave pictures, but I Googled a list of slave pictures, and I have over 20, including 12 Years a Slave, which is the 21st slave picture, I guess, so far. Could be more. 20 slave pictures. So here's my question. In the first 19, uh, what did you miss? They all told the same story. Well, all the stories were historically inaccurate and incomplete, right? When I rant on Facebook about slave pictures, I always say, slavery was not a movie. There was no plot, man. You understand? There was no plot. You know, there was no feel-good moments, do you understand, uh, in, in slavery, right? Um, it was just pure hell. Can you imagine living through slavery? Can you imagine that? Right? And then, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, it's not important. But look, slavery was not a movie. It had no plot. It was ever. It was whatever came up in that master's mind at that particular point in time, right? And believe me, they thought of some evil shit, okay? Boiling slavery, boiling slaves in oil, and then skinning them, and then hanging them from a tree for everybody to see, using newborn babies up to five years old as alligator and crocodile bait. How many babies you think uh, survived? Can you imagine your child being take from you, taken from you and then being used to lure a crocodile or alligator and, and getting eaten? Can you, can you imagine that? You know, so why, why would we want to be reminded of these things every year? I need for somebody to tell me and be unique about the answer, but tell me why do we need to revisit this thing every single year? And only this thing. Now, I understand. I understand that, you know, everybody, okay, here's one, one side of the perspective, right? Okay, our kids need to know what happened to us. We, not, we don't ever need to forget. I even heard a person on the radio uh, say today that the Jews uh, celebrate the, the, the Holocaust every year. I could care less what the and Jews do. You know what I mean? I'm talking about us. Because, see, here's the difference between us and the Jews regarding uh, this particular issue, right? The Jews know who they are. They had their history intact. The Holocaust, they do realize, was nothing but a moment in time in their history. So when they teach their kids, they teach their kids from beginning to date including the Holocaust, but they don't concentrate on it like they can't get past it because that's what Negroes do with slavery. You go out anywhere in the world, I don't care where you go, 
You find me one person, one person in this world that doesn't know black people were slaves. Find me one. Everybody knows we were slaves. Hell, everybody enslaved us. Everybody. So you think it's important that we revisit this and only this. This is our history. Uh, I, I, I listened to a radio program on WTCC this morning. And although they were talking uh, on a totally different subject, right, they were talking about finances and, and, and uh, uh, your financial future and all that, um, somehow the conversation got to slave pictures and 12 years of slave. And that's when my ear, I listened. Now, one of the people on the radio, the brother, man, he said, man, okay, let me, let me bring this in right. Let me bring this in right, okay? They are going to put 12 Years a Slave, this movie, in a high school curriculum. 12 Years a Slave to be incorporated in high school curriculum. Why? And somebody brought that up on the radio program, right? And the brother went ham. I mean, he, what, what do we need that for? What do we need another slave movie or book? Same exact thing I said, what, a week ago, two weeks ago on Facebook? What, what, what do we need that for in our schools? Why can't we empower our kids to be successful instead of reminding them of, 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 of their disposition of captivity? Do you understand? I mean, look, that brings me back to uh, when I was in high school, and I wasn't yet, you know, fully aware of everything that was going on in the world as far as race relations, but I was learning, right? And I remember the black power kids, in which I wasn't a part of yet, okay? I had a lot of white friends, man. I was, you know, I was Mr. International, right? And uh, so I couldn't understand what the big hoopla was. The, 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 the black power kids wanted black history taught in school alongside of white history. They were not satisfied with uh, the history that was being taught, right? Now, you gotta understand at that time, I was viewing the world from the European perspective, so I thought everything was fine. I thought what I was learning was, was it, right? George Washington Carver, you know what I mean? All that stuff, right? We were slaves, we picked cotton, okay, yeah, we shall overcome, and all that stuff, right? So we, we, we went through all that. But Debbie Sullivan, Rafer Hopper, and those guys, man, they weren't satisfied. They knew some stuff I didn't back then. And they fought, and they fought. This was at the High School of Commerce right here in Springfield. Uh, Philip Sweeney was the principal. They fought, and they, they negotiated, and they did everything tooth and nail for about a month. Finally, Sweeney gave in. Now, check this out. Sweeney gave in. Okay, you can have your black studies. But the only issue is you'll have to do it after school. After school. After, you know, we come to school, we go to different classes, we learn, you know, what they want us to learn. And then when all that's done and it's time to go home, if you want to stay after school, then, then you can have your black history class. Well, that bothered me, right? That, that bothered me because I'm thinking why would we, if we want to learn about our history, why do we got to do it after hours? Why can't it be taught alongside the rest of the history, and this is when I began to really get in tune with Debbie Sullivan and Rayford Hopper and those guys, right? And understand what they were talking about. So anyway, I said all that to say this. The studies that Rayford Hopper and Debbie Sullivan wanted incorporated into our school curriculum at that time was study about our history predating slavery, about us being a progressive people after slavery. Do you understand? They were tired of hearing about and studying the same old things every year. They felt it degrading. Oh, we were slaves and blah, 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 blah. You know, after you learn, after you learn, you have a class on that, and then you got to turn around and look at your white, you know, your white uh, friends and students in the class and whatnot. And you're going to see the looks on their face. It was twofold. Little grins like, oh, we're superior. And then, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to say nothing to offend you. Nobody wants to go through that bullshit every fucking year. Here's the deal. And I'm talking to black people. I'm talking to Negroes. I'm talking to black people, right? 
Slavery was nothing but a moment in time in our history. We have a very rich history that predates slavery. And we have a very rich history post-slavery or after slavery. Okay? On that radio show, I called in. I went ham. I voiced my opinion. Yes, I did. I mean, I agreed with the brother, right? After I called in, you know, a couple of people called in, and they said that this is their perspective. It's important for us to know who we are. Check out, check out the mindset. It's important for us to know who we are, okay? So we should have this movie in our high school curriculum so our kids can never forget what we went through. Billy, show me one of your kids that don't know we were slave above the age of five. Show me. Because if they don't know, it's your fault. You're the parent. You need to teach them that. Because the so-called Jews teach their kids at home. They give their kids the real deal. They don't give them this watered-down crap that's in the movies that you break your neck to go see. Do you understand? That's watered-down slavery. I don't tell the whole story. That just glorifies the domination of the Europeans, okay, and shows the captivity of the Negroes. Subservient. Begging for help. Save me, Jesus. Do you understand? I mean, at what point do you get tired of that? You want your kids to be empowered. You want your kids to have a great self-esteem, to have self-identity, to know who they are, so that they can, they're able to stand on an unlevel ground and compete with people who feel superior. You teach them real history from the beginning. Do you understand? Before Egypt, before Kemet became Egypt, or Kemet became Egypt. Do you understand? Before the first cracker set his foot on, a, on African soil. Do you understand? That's our history. That's our history. That's our beginning. That's where we are from. That's who we are. Do you understand? You want them to be empowered, you teach them. You teach them how we were like that and how we fell because we opened our arms and embraced these people when they came to our land and they enslaved us. You teach them how the Arabs were the first to enslave us. Do you understand? Arabs came into Africa, conquering different parts of Africa. They were the first ones. But anyways, on this radio show this morning, uh, I couldn't believe the lady... It, it, the, the, uh, the lady called in, and she said she really thinks it should be incorporated into our, our curriculum, right, because we need to know who we are. She was the second person that said that. A guy said it right before she called, and she reiterated it when she called. So I called back, and I got through, and I was the last one. I, they ended the show on my, on, on my rant. No, that's not who we are. She, she got it twisted saying that, oh, uh, we don't want to put our history on the back burner to learn something else. We don't want to put slavery on the back burner to learn that before we were slaves, we were kings, queens, and had civilization. We don't want to put slavery on the back burner to learn that we, our race, taught this world technology and how to be civilized, Right? Our kids don't need to know that. That's not important. We need to know we were slaves. You understand? That's her mindset, which brings me to this. Yeah, I got some stuff queued up for you today. Uh, where is he at? This brother, I saw this video the other day. I watched this video. Somebody put it on my stream on Facebook. Black America is in deep trouble by Dr. Claude Anderson. I remember who put that who put that post up, Brother Derek Jones, from uh, one of my Facebook friends. Dr. Claude Anderson hit the nail on the head. This brother is so deep. Look here. If you paid your $12, $15, $20, whatever it was, to go see a damn slave movie, you could damn sure go to YouTube and watch this thing for free. 
If you sat there for two, three hours, however long that slave picture was, you could still take an hour and listen to the brother. I had a, a good friend on Facebook. I, I, I put a post up, and I use, you know, the word I use all the time, cracker, right? So for you, those of you who don't know, let me say this in advance so you won't be confused and you can understand where I'm coming from. When I'm talking about crackers or those people, I'm talking about racist white people that hate our freaking guts, that want us dead. I understand all white people are not racist. I'm not talking to all white people. I'm talking to the racist one. I'm talking on a level that they understand in a language that they understand, right? I call them what they are, crackers. Crackers were the master that cracked the whip, that kept the niggas in line, and these are what these people are trying to do. When I say those people, I'm separating them and differentiating them from the rest of the regular people. So, so that's enough of that. Dr. Uh, Claude Anderson. Dr. Claude Anderson, man, he touched so many things. He told us that within three years, we're going to be done, you know, as a people. I mean, I'm not talking about dead. I'm talking about uh, we're going to be permanently a lower class because other minorities are coming here, and they're hoarding their money, and they're doing all these things to be progressive, right, you know, to be progressive as a race, not individually like Negroes do. Because the minute Negro get money, he want to move out. So why would we want to have this movie, right, this movie in <laughs> in high school, out of the 20 slave pictures that were made, right, out of the 20, this one goes to a high school. You want to know why? There was, uh, there was a post that I, I was following a post of a friend. Okay, very beautiful black sister, Roxanne, <clears throat> excuse me, Roxanne Watson. Very political, very brilliant black sister, okay? And we were talking about a particular topic, and some one of her friends posted this, this radio interview of a white supremacist, okay? Um, or this person talking about white supremacy. I don't know if he's a supremacist or not. But he broke it down, people. He broke it down, and he told us point blank, because he was on a black radio show, Right? He was talking to us. He told us point blank, look, everything that you do is about race. Everything. From the moment you were born, from the moment you wake up in the morning till you close your eyes at night or die, it's about color. He said that point blank. Then he went to go into detail about how white supremacists, white supremacists rule this freaking world, as if, well, a lot of y'all probably don't know it, but I do, and a lot of y'all do. We know it, but you guys walk around, oh, I don't see color, it's not about color, and Nate, you're so racist, and stop being this. So anyways, um, here's the thing. I liken all that onto this, right? <clears throat> I know I'm jumping all over the place because my, my, you know, all this stuff in my head, I was sat down to make a nice show, but I want to go ham. So I got to keep myself in control, man. Um, this dude, this dude, uh, I, I don't have his name. I don't have him queued up, but I, I wish, I, I posted it on my page. Go to my page and, and, uh, at, at www.facebook.com slash solo753-2000 or just search Nate Patterson. I'm the one with the uh, Trayvon representation for the profile picture and for the millions in, uh, as my cover picture because everything I do now is for our ancestors. You understand? For the millions that died, for the millions that gave their life, that gave their life through slavery and all that. Okay, so that we can be here to do what we're doing. And I don't think they intended us to go watch slave pictures and make some crackers rich. You understand? But anyways, so out of all the 20 uh, uh, slave pictures, you know, the 20th slave picture is different. Why is that slave picture different? Because as I understand it, and I don't watch this crap, there's only one slave picture that I got, like, practically halfway through, that was Mandingo. And my boys had to get me out of the damn theater before they called 911 because I was pitching a fucking bitch in that place, which was predominantly white people was in there watching. 
You understand? But anyways, um, I, this 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 picture. Well, it was different from this picture in the other ones because it was written by a black person. Now, let me tell you, let me show you the hypocrisy of America, okay? Every slave picture does well at the Oscars, right? And I don't know this lady's name. I, I think she's South African. I think she's African. She's very dark-skinned, beautiful black woman. Okay, lip though, lip, I, I'm not even going to try her name, I'm not going to ruin it. But you all know who I'm talking about. <clears throat> okay, she won supporting, best supporting actress. Let's look at that for a minute. Okay, first of all, we got a slave picture up. So we already know that anybody, anybody of color in that movie is going to be in a subservient role. Right, we already know that. Okay, so they took this young lady, who probably is a brilliant actress. I've never in my life heard of her before this. I'm not sure how many of you heard of her before this. Do you understand? They let her win. Maybe she's a good actress, maybe not. I don't know. I didn't see her performance. But think about what she won for. And think about what the movie's about. Can you put that together yet? She won Best Supporting Actress. Negro subserving at role. No, oh, she won. <laughs> yeah, she won. Well, we're not really looking at that. Why didn't she win Best Actress? The movie won Best Picture. No, well, she didn't have a leading, you know, she wasn't the leading role, or she wasn't this, she wasn't that. Hey, what difference does it make? If she outperformed everybody, then she was the best actress, regardless of her role. Right? But no, you know. Once again, back to that, best actors went to some cracker, right? You can't see that because you don't look below the surface of things. Do you understand? Because any time a slave picture is made, it's going to do well because white America has to have some way to appease the dark masses, some way, and we run over ourselves to get at these these uh these uh movies like you know like we have to go look at them. It's mandatory, but not too many people can uh can can can, can tell me who M. Hotep is. You know what I mean? You can give me the definition or, the, or, or you can tell me who Queen Nefertiti is or Queen Isis because they've been in a lot of white movies, right? Who was in Motep? Who was Horus in Heru? Who was Osiris? Can you answer those questions? Because if you can, then you understand it. Feel me. You know what I'm talking about. But for those, those of you who are saying, I don't know who those are, no, you wouldn't know because... You've been indoctrinated into the European perspective. You could tell me who Jehovah is, Yahweh, Jesus. As soon as you say Jesus' name, you run around and do like a little jig dance or whatnot, and, and you're so happy. For what? Hmm? What has he done for you? No. Oh, Jesus is this, Jesus is that. Jesus, number one, was not a white, blonde haired, blue eyed God. You know what I mean? Oh, that don't matter. Why doesn't it matter? Because if you are going to tell me every single thing that God did and said, and that's extremely important, don't you think what he looks like is also extremely important? So that when he does come, we'll know exactly who the fuck he is? Hmm? Consider this. What if Jesus was the Antichrist and Jesus was the mark of the beast. I'm talking white Jesus. Think about that for a minute. For every last one of you people that gave your life like me, oh, he's my Lord and Savior, you were marked with the mark of the beast. Because if they whitewashed a god, then he is no longer the god that you were supposed to be worshiping. You are now worshiping another god. Doesn't your Bible say, don't worship a false god? Well, Jesus wasn't white. The Bible don't describe him as white. But they present him as white. 
and you don't think that you that, that it doesn't that it doesn't make a difference, <clears throat> the next time that you think about any uh, story from the Bible, the next time you're in church and, and your pastor, if he ain't preaching about money, right, if he's actually preaching about something in the Bible, close your eyes and try to picture what he's talking about. You tell me the color of the people that you see. You don't have to report back to nobody. This is a, a self-exercise. This is an exercise to see where your mind is, to see if you've been indoctr indoctrinated or if you are captive okay, by that crap those Europeans wrote in that book that you fight tooth and nail about. You do that. Because Horace or Heru is black. And guess what? Right? It's folklore. It wasn't real. It wasn't real, people. And that's where they got Jesus from, the story of Jesus. So how can he be real? Anyway. So let's get back to 12 Years a Slave, right? 12 Years a Slave won Best Picture. This is awkward because I can't say what I want to say. I know this is my show, and I usually go, go ham, but me going ham usually turns a lot of people off, and I really want you guys to feel me on this, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remain calm, right? <clears throat> I'm trying to keep my thoughts in order, which probably not. Twelve Years a Slave, another slave picture, man. This lady that won Best Supporting Actress, the, the subservient role, which is indicative or typical of how we're viewed, right? You know what's going to happen to her now that her career is going to take off, right? You know what's going to happen? They're going to start giving her movie roles like they did Shaft, Richard Roundtree. Took him out the ghetto. They put him in middle-class America. They took away his leather. They gave him a suit and tie, and they gave him an all-white cast and ruined it. Now, what they're going to do with this young lady is what they did with Holly Berry and everybody else. They're going to take them and put them in an all-white cast. Her, her leading man and love interest are now going to be white men. Do you understand? Because they got to show that fucking control. And here's what you don't understand about that. Oh, Nick, it, you know, the actor just happens to be white. No, the hell he don't. That's done by design. That's done by design. And you, you know, I mean, black people are just so freaking gullible. You're just so accepting in your endeavor to be loved and accepted by these people. Do you understand? It's done by design. To show the absence of the black man. You have no clue. In order to defeat a people, you have to defeat the you have to defeat the male population. You have to do that in order to defeat a people. There's many ways to do that, but that's one main reason, main way to defeat a people. You got to keep their male population in line. Then you attack their women. You attack their women in terms of of of, of having the women believe that their their men can't protect them, can't support them, can't do nothing for them, and the object of their desire should be something other than the black male. The object of their desire should be the white male. This, why can't you see it? All you scandal lovers, why can't you see it? The first year, I watched about four or five, uh, four or five episodes of Scandal. I'm not going to go into all that bullshit. But Carrie Washington, man, she didn't have black friends. She didn't have black family. When they finally brought her ex, who happened to be a black man, she treated him like shit. But the object of her desire was the white man. And you people love that. Y'all love it. It's only entertainment, Nate. Sure. That only entertainment is 86% to 90% 90% of the way you view the world. You understand? From the cuff, no facts and figures. It's just all my opinion, right? But here's the thing: we need another, uh, <clears throat> we need another slave picture, like we need another hole in the head, or like we need a hole in the head. Someone else on Facebook brought up this idea that I think is brilliant, and I can live with it. What we need is a movie about our people that starts from the beginning and comes to date. And it can include 
the moment in time that we were enslaved. But it doesn't have to be the focus. The focus should be on how we, how we were, our fall, and how we're rising again. Do you understand that, you know, if you can stop attacking our president and, and call him this and that, and as you do nothing but parrot what those crackers are saying about him because you're starting to buy into that bullshit, right? If you, if you can do all that, put that aside for a minute, you'll see that we became full, that we have come full circle, right? Because the first people on this earth, on this planet, were black. We were the rulers. And now we have a black man that is, 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 is in the most powerful position on this planet. Once again, we rule the world right now. Were we too busy being divided and told, oh, Obama ain't doing shit for black people? You know, we do this because we don't have a foundation. We don't have a foundation because most of our people don't know anything about our history beyond slavery. That's why we run back to uh, run to these pictures every time these crackers make a picture and lose our minds. That's why. That's why that lady on the radio program said, you know, we need to know who we are and where we came from. Because she don't know. She don't know. You understand? From the European perspective, they want you to focus right there and stay there. Because knowledge is power. And if we get knowledge of self and where we came from, we will be empowered to move forward and get beyond this, this captivity that these Europeans have us in. So every few years they come out with slave picture. Oh, they just came out with another picture called Son of God. <laughs> another white man playing Jesus, but it don't matter what color he is. You know? So very short. I hope I made some kind of sense. I'm not sure if I did, but uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching Voice. People, 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 we don't need another slave movie, okay? I'm Nate Patterson. Peace. After the show, it's the after party then. After the party, it's the hotel lobby then. After the bell, then it's probably Chris. And after the original, it's probably this. Yes, my best stop. Be yes, stop. Remix with the homie from the Midwest side. Game recognized, game hoes do too. It's a new two live crew, I suppose you do. So, gloves, pop the toasters, but don't approach us. Or bullets will chase you like Moe at Mimosas. Catch us both coasters, racing twin coaches. Boxes with glass to the pop, you to make it closer. Whoever come closest, you've been warned. But niggas don't get the picture till the weapons is drawn. Make your way backstage, baby girl, it's on. And we'll be drinking till six in the morning. In the back of the club with my mom. Popping bottles of Chris with my mom. Put the bar on the tap for my mom. Throwing hundreds up for grabs for my mom.